Hi, I'm uh, Rich Tabor of Cornell Cooperative Extension of Shenango County, New York. And today we are here in the Kipp Law Farm in Sherburn, New York. And with us today is Dave Balbian, the Central New York Regional uh, Dairy and Field Crops representative for Cooperative Extension. And today we're going to be looking at some uh, uh, issues of cow comfort. And cow comfort has been determined to be one of the uh, a very important contributor to making uh, more profitable uh, returns from dairy cows. And Dave will be uh, uh, asking uh, uh, Kip some questions here. Kip is considering doing uh, some barn improvements and we're going to be looking at throughout the course of this film and some other farms some of the key considerations to take into uh, mind when uh, dealing with stall barns and free stall barns for uh, how to improve them for cow comfort. I guess I want to ask Kip uh, some of the things he's thinking about or what he's considering or what's got him thinking about uh, making some changes here in this facility. That's, it's been a number of years since anything's really been changed in this barn here. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, probably so, 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so what are the kind of things that you're thinking about uh, doing and, and maybe the reasons why and then we can kind of talk about some of these specifics. Well, the main thing is cow comfort. I think the stall should be bigger. I think their eating area should be higher, and I think their water should be more accessible. Mm -hmm. As we kind of look down the barn here, we see these, these cows are really kind of squeezed in these stalls here, standing at the very uh, edge of the stall right near the gutter. Um, and, and even the width itself, uh, nowadays one of the things that I guess I would say one of the uh, kind of design parameters that's really been catching on in this part of the state are some designs by a veterinarian from Canada, Dr. Neil Anderson. Basically what he's doing is, is trying to really uh, take a look at uh, cows in a natural state, what they, what they need, the kind of space that they need to get up, to move around, and designing stalls that are uh, kind of specific to what the cow's needs really are, rather than what, what our, the people's needs are really. So when, when we think about uh, cow comfort, we ought to be thinking about the cow more, more than, the, uh, than the people. Um, you mentioned the water system. Uh, I mean, one, one of the things that uh, there's, I guess there's a lot of different things people have thought about as far as water bowls and tie stall barns, high capacity bowls that have more water in them. Uh, we're going to show you on another farm, and I know this is one of the things you're, you're considering of, of actually putting like a water trough system in a, in a tie stall barn. Um, there's a big reserve there, a lot of volume. There's actually less, less maintenance. You don't have to maintain every single bucket. And uh, some of our really high producing cows we know that they can drink quite a large volume of water in a short period of time and at a much faster rate than any, any bucket system can, uh, can provide. So that's one of the things that uh, we've seen people really be, be pleased with. Uh, you do have tunnel ventilation in this barn, and, and that's, uh, that's a feature that a lot of tie stall barns have really taken advantage of and has really uh, improved the air quality. We also need to think about the stall surface. I know you got mattresses in here. Uh, you use uh, sawdust for bedding. There's a lot of different options, and we're going to be exploring uh, some of those different choices and options as we go over the, uh, the, uh, to the other farms here that are part of, uh, part of what we want to show you here today. One of the things uh, is, is pretty common in tie stall barns uh, today, especially if they haven't been upgraded for a number of years, is to take a look at the neck rail here. You look at some of these cows here, and you can see where the hair's been rubbed off. Uh, so these cows are really putting a lot of pressure on here. There's, it's obvious that if they had a little bit more room there, it'd be more comfortable for them. Um, and in some cases, we can see some swelling on some of these cows, not, not in this particular barn, but in other barns I, I have seen that. So uh, there's an opportunity there. One of the things that people think about oftentimes, we provide all this extra space, there's going to be a lot of manure in the back of the stall. And uh, that's true. However, one of the ways we can overcome that, and it kind of varies from farm to farm as far as uh, whether the cows have their own stalls or not, is, is to use cow trainers. Uh, basically, an electric wire with a trainer that when a cow gets up, it kind of hits her, and she steps back, basically, and the manure ends up in, in the gutter. And one of the things I wanted to show you, I mean, it's, it's obvious there's, it's been a while since this, uh, this barn has been upgraded. You can see some of the, some of the repairs that need to be made here. The neck rail is... Uh, 
is not in the best of shape. Uh, the water bowls are uh, not in the best of shape as well. Um, so there's some real opportunities there. And as I mentioned earlier, these water trough systems seem to be pretty popular. The other thing is that we need to design uh, feed manger areas uh, so that, that cows will uh, consume as much feed as possible. And you can see there's a liner in here, which is a, a great thing. However, with the cost of feed today, one of the things that's happening here is that some of this feed is ending up into the stall area. So, so we're losing some expensive feed here. So uh, not only cow comfort, but thinking about economics of uh, feeding and, uh, and uh, minimizing our feed losses and stuff. So, so uh, there's a lot of things things that uh, Kip I know is uh, thinking about here and so uh, we'll see where, where things go and the kind of decisions he makes going down the road here in the future. Here we are at the uh, farm of uh, Phil and Lisa Proskin in Sherburne, New York and uh, they have gone through a barn upgrade and we're going to be talking about some of the components that we touched upon over at Kip's here and see what it looks like after an improvement job has uh, been accomplished. Phil why don't you tell us what happened here? Well, we jackhammered all the cement out, poured, made the beds longer and whiter, put new manger liner in, the stainless steel trough, made the high neck rail so it's a lot higher so they don't rub against it anymore, and put new cow mats in. And, and, and tell us a little bit uh, what, what you've seen as far as the difference. Uh, I know uh, earlier today, uh, and we weren't here at that time, you said all the cows were laying down, the whole bunch of them and stuff. I mean, uh, how does that compare to what you had seen before with the old stalls? Before, you just see a few here and there laying down. Now, when you come out between 8 and 9 in the morning, every cow is laying down, but maybe one or two. Yeah. And, and that, I'll tell you, over the long haul, the research shows that really makes a difference. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more uh, later about uh, resting requirements and some of the research and what's that shown us from a standpoint of how it affects milk productivity. And uh, when these cows are all laying down, that tells you that, uh, you know, as long as they've got plenty of feed and water and they're filled up, uh, they're laying down, they're chewing their cud, uh, they're making milk, and that's that's what you're really looking for. So, And you can see these stalls here have a lot more space. And we're going to go around in the front here and show you some of the features in the front here as far as the rail, uh, how much more room the cows have got, the stainless steel liner, the manger liner, uh, the new water buckets, and, and everything from the other side here. All right, so, so here we are in uh, Phil and Lisa's barn back in the front here, and you can see all the additional space these cows have got here. The stalls are longer, wider, uh, a lot more comfortable. Uh, the rail is much higher here. Um, and uh, we're going we're gonna to also take a look at a section of the barn where the rail isn't as high, so, so you'll be able to see the difference. Also, the stainless steel liner that got put in when this got remodeled, uh, the water buckets back in here, uh, and these here are high-capacity buckets. We're going we're gonna to go to another farm uh, where they actually put a trough system in, so those are some of the options to think about from a standpoint of uh, making it a little bit more comfortable and easier for these cows uh, to make milk for us. Okay, and, and here we are at the other side of the barn here at the other end, and one of the things we wanted to show you here is uh, is a difference. Uh, this is the same kind of stall design, but because of a, a feed elevator and being able to get a feed cart into uh, into this section of the barn, uh, this, this area down here had to be at a lower level, kind of similar to the way it was before. And so you can see the difference here. And if we come down here, one of the things we can see is that here's a cow right here that you can see kind of that classic her hair all rubbed off and stuff from rubbing against the bar here so um, certainly this is much improved to what it was before but because of some of the limitations of the old barn here this section had to be had to be done that way and uh, and I know you put some of the smaller I get Phil in the picture here you put some of the smaller cows down here I guess don't you yeah, most yeah. Of the time. so they're a little bit uh, more adapted to it all right here we are <laughs> at the farm of uh, Bob and Alex Tumalowitz uh, just outside of Norwich in Shenango County, New York, and we're going to be looking at some uh, very nice additions to cow comfort that they have done in the last few years here, and, and Dave Balbian here is going to be uh, uh, <clears throat> elaborating on some of these uh, concepts. So, uh, Dave? He talked, and we possibly wanted to get the addition going. So then we waited. He said so many years when I'm, I want to milk so many years and keep pretend like I'm paying you and we're gonna get cows. So we were buying cows, 
addition came, so we've been milking in this addition going on third winter, which would be two and a half years now. So, and, and so how many uh, how many stalls did this addition add to the barn here? Twenty four. Twenty four extra stalls. So that gives you how many total in the in the barn here now? Full barn is eighty. It's eighty. Eighty cows. Eighty cows. Okay, and we're going to show you some of the things that they did here with this with this new addition, and some of it carried down into the old barn as well. And it's really kind of a combination of things that add cow comfort, uh, but also add to, I guess I would say, labor efficiency, making it easier on the on the people that are working right. here. One of the first things that you notice here is this track system uh, between every set of pairs of cows, so to speak, so you don't have to lug that automatic unit with you. It just saves a lot on the back, uh, makes it a, makes it a lot easier. He's wheeling one of these units out here right now. Bring it right out. The only bad spot is right here on this hump where you have to hold up the poses a little bit. But there you go. And go between any cow you want. Uh, you put rubber mats in here, which you've got in the uh, in the old section of the barn here. Um, and you, you look at these cows here, they've got good healthy hocks, uh, no bruises, even the hair isn't even rubbed off. The other thing here is this water trough system. Instead of having to maintain a, a bucket for every two cows or every every cow, depending on the kind of system you have, you got one float for how many cows? This whole section here. Um, and I guess I... I have had many people that have told me, I don't know if you would say that or not, but a high producing cow, when she wants to drink a lot of water, there's a big reservoir of water here so she can drink it and there's nothing that's impinging on her ability to consume as much as she wants. The other thing is the, uh, is the tile and, and the manger here, which you've got through the entire barn all the way down. Um, these concrete floors over time, uh, because of the acid that's in the feed, the corn, especially if a farm is feeding uh, um, uh, fermented feed and the saliva from the cows basically kind of eats all the cement out and you end up with all these rough stones. And then you've got basically kind of rotten feed in there. And uh, that certainly makes a difference as far as uh, feed intake. So uh, really a much, much, much better environment for the cows. Instead of solid walls here, these are insulated curtains. So uh, there's a little bit of opening here. They're opening them now. Uh, but in the summertime, when the cows are in here, uh, these sidewalls can be completely open. So uh, just taking advantage of uh, any natural ventilation and air movement um, really helps the air quality in here and stuff. Keeps it a lot cooler in the summertime, I'm assuming. Uh, just uh, a tremendous improvement.